Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sam Stepanian. Um, I'm an OWASP chapter leader and OWASP NetAcker project co-leader. I uh, work in London in the um, financial services uh, sector as an application security consultant. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about the OWASP NetAcker project. So um, a few more words about me. Uh, apart from being an OWASP London chapter leader, I also lead the OWASP chapter, chapter committee where we help uh, all OWASP chapters to succeed, to be healthy, to be active. Um, I originally come from the software development background. I'm an application developer and uh, I'm an application security guy and I am a defender. So why am I presenting a talk about a tool which consists of two words, network and attacker, while I am a defender and an application security guy? I had a bit of a history with um, uh, OWASP NetHacker because I didn't know about this tool until I was pinged by the original uh, NetHacker project leaders in 2018, where they asked me and um, OWASP London chapter co-leader, Dr. Greg Frakos, to go to Black Hat Europe 2018 conference and present this project because the um, uh, NetHacker project leaders were unable to travel to London at that time. So um, myself and Dr. Greg Frakos, we had to learn this tool overnight uh, on a Zoom session, and we ab 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 absolutely, absolutely loved it. Uh, we knew very, very little about this tool because it was a brand new tool back then. Uh, we saw it appearing on the list of OWASP projects, but we didn't really know what it is. And once we learned what it is, we were really, really happy to go and present it at uh, Black Hat Europe um, 2018 in London. And then suddenly this happened. We had uh, huge crowds of season penetration testers, um, software developers, security engineers, um, even some um, information security managers gathering around our stand at the Black Cat Europe Arsenal booth uh, watching the presentation of the tool. So I said, okay, this is good. People like the tool. So um, I became a co-leader of uh, OWAS Netaka project and uh, proposed that it would be also presented uh, the following year in 2019. And then suddenly this happened. Even bigger crowds uh, gathered around watching this tool and absolutely everybody loved this tool. But why? What is it about OWAS Netaka that um, everybody um, is so uh, intrigued about? So OWASP NetHacker, first of all, is an open source software tool, just like all OWASP projects. Uh, and OWASP NetHacker's um, goal is to assist with penetration testing by automating uh, tasks such as information gathering and vulnerability scanning. Uh, because this tool is written in 100% Python, it doesn't require any external tools to be present in the operating system, and it can be run on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Um, very important thing to mention about OWASP NetHacker that it is actually written and it has by students uh, who participated in initiative called Google Summer of Code. And if you don't know what Google Summer of Code is, it is a great initiative uh, by Google, which is running every year. And that is essentially a paid internship for students to select an open source project of their liking and apply to work on that project during the summer break. And uh, this is how uh, we at OWAS benefited um, uh, by having students to um, uh, help us to enhance the tool. And actually it's not just the OWAS Netaka, there are many other OWAS um, projects um, like OWAS Zap, for example, or OWAS Shop, which benefited from um, uh, Google Summer of Code. And uh, it's not just OWASP which participates, many other uh, open source organizations do as well. So if you're a student watching this or you know uh, any students who you think might be interested in spending their summer break working on open source and uh, gathering some real experience, um, please do check out Google Summer of Code. It usually runs uh, from March every year until the end of August. So. What is OWASP NetHacker? You can think of OWASP NetHacker as a Swiss army knife kind of tool, because just like a Swiss army knife, it is a collection of tools. It has a modular structure. Um, it's uh, relatively easy to create your own modules. We recently changed how you write your modules uh, from Python to YAML. I will talk about this a little bit la later. 
It is a fast performing tool because it's using multi-threading, which you can control. It's using Python's multi-threading model. Uh, important thing is that it has customizable profiles, which are bundles of modules focused on a specific task. So if you can imagine, you can pull out several blades out of your Swiss army knife uh, to perform a specific task to make it uh, quicker or more efficient. And of course, the most important thing is automation because you can automate and run this tool from the command line. So a um, few other uh, bits about OWASP Attacker that it is uh, not an officially released tool yet. It's not even in beta. It's still in research and development phase. So the current versions are 002 and 003. Uh, and we're always looking for more contributors. I will um, tell you how to contribute to the project at the end of my presentation. However, what is great about uh, OWASP Attacker is that it is usable right now. And it is a great tool which already has a command line interface web user interface, an API report generator. It also has Multigo transform, so people who use Multigo, which is a great um, uh, investigation tool available, for example, in Kali Linux. And NetTucker currently has over 70 modules. So um, you can find OWASP NetTucker on the main OWASP.org website under projects. This is the URL uh, where you can uh, learn about the project and see some quick uh, demonstration there. Um, important bit about documentation that we use the wiki part on the GitHub. So if you would like to read the documentation, please click on the wiki button once you visit the uh, OWASP NetTucker on GitHub. And there is an installation uh, section there where you can learn how to install it. You can install NetTucker uh, relatively simply and it will run on anything. So uh, I prefer uh, using it for, uh, prefer using it in Kali Linux, but you can use it on uh, any platform. Uh, there are several requirements for installation, so please do follow the installation instructions because there are some dependencies that you need to install. However, if you are using Black Arch Linux distribution, which is a um, Linux distribution uh, specifically targeting uh, penetration testing um, uh, engagements, uh, you will find out that recently NetHacker was included in Black Arch, and you can see it's uh, currently being listed under the Black Arch automation tools and the version 002 is actually built into Black Arch, which is absolutely great. And we're very thankful to the Black Arch Linux team, which included our tool in the Linux distribution. So um, in order for you to understand what OWASP NetHacker is and how it compares with other scanners that you might know, for example, with scanners such as Burp Suite of or OWASP ZAP. So scanners like Burp or OWASP ZAP, uh, they usually would scan one website for many web application vulnerabilities. And that's whatever the scanner is able to find. So these tools will go and crawl one website to discover all URLs, all parameters, all, all forms, you know, all the buttons will try to click on all the links and then it will try to see uh, if there are any vulnerabilities. OWASP NetHacker doesn't work like that. It doesn't scan just one website. It scans one or many, and that can be hundreds or thousands of IP addresses, networks or subdomains. And what is it scanning them for? For open ports or one or more specific vulnerabilities listed by the user. And these are basically what our modules are. And you can bundle the modules in a profile to search for specific things. So NetHacker consists of three types of modules. Um, modules of type scan, for example, port scan. Uh, modules of type vuln, uh, these are the modules which are looking for a specific vulnerability. For example, Apache Struts vuln module will look for Apache Struts vulnerability. And it has modules of type brute uh, for brute forcing. So for example, an SSH brute module will, will perform brute forcing on, over the SSH protocol. So that's essentially what the module types are. And that's what makes this tool great because it combines three different types of um, activities, scanning uh, for um, uh, in the information gathering, um, scanning for a specific vulnerability and brute forcing. So how do you run the attacker? In order to run the attacker from the command line, you need to define two parameters. You need to define the target. What do you want to scan? and the module, which module do you want to use to scan it with? And um, you do it with the dash I 
command line switch where you define your target and dash M for your module. So for example, if I want to perform a port scan on IP address 192.168.1.149, I will call an attacker with dash I and the IP address and dash M with a module with a port scan. You can also scan not just one IP address, but the whole network, for example, if you provide 192.168.1.0 slash 24, you will scan the entire class C network or 255 IP addresses. And actually an attacker has more targets available. You can scan a single IP address as I've just shown you before. You can also scan an IP address range by providing a starting IP address and an ending IP address. You can also scan a network by providing the CIDR slash bits notation. But what is also very interesting that you can scan a domain, for example, OWASP.org, and you can also scan URLs uh, using HTTP or HTTPS protocol. So these are the various types of the attacker targets. Uh, but that is not all because if you are if you work for a large organization, that means you will have a multitude of networks, you will have several domain names and uh, lots of IP addresses. So what you can do, you can actually create a text file which lists all the uh, targets that you want to scan, uh, one target per uh, line in uh, the text file, and then just load the list of targets using the dash L parameters. So that is another way of uh, running the attacker. And again, for example, if you want to run a specific module, for example, a port scan on all your networks, all your domains and subdomains, um, that is what you can do. And this is what is uh, making NetTucker so great. So let me now do a quick live demo. Uh, let me just switch to my Kali Linux uh, installation here, um, where I already have NetTucker installed. And again, a reminder if you want to uh, learn how to install NetTucker, just check out documentation on GitHub under the GitHub wiki. Uh, so because Netacker is a tool written in Python, I'm going to use uh, Python to run it. So if I run Netacker with um, uh, no parameters, um, what is going to happen? It's just going to return a usage instructions. You can see there's uh, lots of information being displayed on the screen, um, which can be quite confusing. This is why please do check out the documentation where you will be able to find out uh, about all the modules available, what they do and uh, any additional parameters that you might need to use. But um, here and in, in my first example, let me actually try to run NetTucker um, on an IP address uh, and perform a port scan. Actually, I want to scan this particular IP address now. So this is what I need to specify. I just need to def uh, provide the IP address and then port scan as the module. Of course, many of you are probably using tools such as Nmap for port scanning. And um, usually people will have like a love and hate relationship with Nmap. Um, and in Attacker, what is great about port scanning is that it is actually quite simple, very powerful, and it is written in Python. So you don't even need to install Nmap on your system. All you need to do is just to have um, uh, Python installed. So there you go. You can see how quickly an attacker scanned it and uh, returned us the results where you can see um, all the port numbers which were open. And also you can see in the description column here, it tries to identify what they are. And you can see that it was Telnet, SSH, Sun RPC. But for example, you can see on ports 8084 and 8090 on this particular target, it thinks that it is actually running HTTP, which is very important because as you can see, people can run uh, things like web service or SSH service on some obscure ports and Tucker can actually identify what is uh, running there. Um, you can see that the NetTucker, after it completed the scan, it uh, displays the uh, information in its tabular format. And it also stores the data in HTML file, as you can see here, and the database. So the database bit is actually quite important because it's not like other tools which complete the scan and then that's it and they have to do something with it. No, NetTucker actually stores everything in database. And again, that is a very uh, good feature because you can actually search the database and I'll talk about this a little bit later. Now, so we have seen how to use NetTucker for port scanning, but um, let me show you some other ways how you can use NetTucker by using multiple modules and how you can use it on a uh, domain name. So for example, if I want to scan OWASP.org uh, domain and I want to perform a subdomain scan, right? I can uh, 
run this command and uh, OWASP Netaka now is going to go and discover all the subdomains of OWASP.org and give us the list. You can see how qu quickly this was done. However, what Netaka um, has, it has a unique feature which allows you to combine subdomain scan with any other module available. So for example, there is a module which is called uh, server version Vuln, and server version Vuln is a module which is trying to uh, detect if the web server in question is returning or leaking uh, the type of the web server in the uh, response headers in the server header. And we can see if we run it on OWASP.org uh, that uh, OWASP.org is actually leaking the, uh, its server header and it says that it's running Cloudflare. So, okay, great. Now we know what the OWASP.org is running on. But this is not all, because what we can also do, we can add uh, another uh, module. So I can change, for example, X powered by vulnerability, and that will return another header, which is the X powered by header. Um, and we, you can also see any extra information uh, provided by the X powered by header um, of that web server. And uh, that is not all. As you can see, this is all on OWASP.org website. Um, and we can see that um, NetHacker actually discovered um, uh, open ports, port 80, port 443, and told us in this uh, information gathering session um, what type of the server and technologies are being run on OWASP.org. But what is great, as I mentioned, you can actually add subdomain scan to this and by adding dash S parameter. And what's going to happen now is Netaka is actually going to go and discover all the subdomains of OWASP.org and it's going to run the uh, these two modules that I listed on every single subdomain. And as a result, as you can see, it is very quick and see uh, literally within a few seconds, now we have information about all the subdomains of OWASP.org and everything that they are running. So this is absolutely a great feature. And uh, what you uh, can do uh, after this, because obviously, um, how do you consume the results? You can check out the report. So you can see, for example, here, the report is stored in the HTML file. So uh, let's see if we can open this uh, HTML file with a web browser. So I have a Firefox here. Uh, let's see if we can uh, open this file and see what is shown in this HTML file. You can see uh, um, a great feature on Netaka here called penetration testing graph. And you can see that Netaka started its attack and started connecting to various subdomains of OWASP.org. And we can see that on every single target here, uh, the server version vulnerability and X powered by vulnerability modules, they return a result. And you can see uh, what was actually running on them. And uh, why the graph is important because by looking at the shape of the graph you can see that uh, and spot some patterns for example you can see that one of the subdomains of OWASP.org did not have X powered by vulnerability returning anything because that header was not present. You can see it was just server version vuln. And we can see in this case, this was Nginx. And if you scroll down of this report, you will find the results in the same familiar tabular format. You will see all the hosts, which will be either the subdomain or a specific IP address. If you scan your network, the username and password columns, which are currently blank, they are used used for uh, brute forcing. So if you try to uh, run a brute forcing attack, uh, for example, to discover if there are any uh, servers on your network which are using default credentials such as admin admin or uh, whatever default credentials you are looking for, um, they will be displayed here in this username and password columns uh, if there is a match. You can see the port number, you can see the type of the module which was in use, and you can see the description column. There's a bit of a um, visual effect, so if I want uh, to focus your attention on a particular line uh, in this table, I can just hover over the row of data and you can see that uh, this particular host, for example, was running Nginx. So that is the um, uh, results in HTML format. However, Netaka has um, ability to uh, run um, uh, some other reports as well. And uh, again, what makes it great is that apart from the, um, uh, the graphs, uh, it can also output results in uh, CSV and JSON formats. Um, and why is it important? Because we, 
um, with using JSON, people can actually consume these results for integration with other tools because JSON is structured data. And uh, after you run NetHacker on your networks, you can take that JSON file and feed it into any other tool which can consume it. And uh, for example, provide you a different reporting analytics or perhaps a further uh, vulnerability scanning. And why is it important to have CSV? It's because um, uh, you get results in a spreadsheet format. And this is probably what is so great about OWASP Netacker. It's probably uh, the only tool I know which is free and open source, and it allows you to scan your network, uh, discover all the open ports, all the service, uh, all the vulnerabilities, and they give you results in Excel spreadsheet format, which is fantastic. And everybody gets a spreadsheet. Everybody loves the spreadsheet. You can easily, of course, filter that spreadsheet, filter the data, uh, search for whatever is needed, and uh, it is absolutely uh, fantastic for uh, companies to uh, basically run this free and open source tool and get the list of all the um, assets, open ports and vulnerabilities in one uh, very convenient spreadsheet format. So this is a, a unique feature of NetHacker, which uh, I think probably one of the best features of this little tool. Uh, so. Um, what NetHacker is solving by uh, uh, storing the results in the database format and giving you the spreadsheet, it's, it's uh, solving something called OWASP A0. If you don't know what OWASP A0 is, it's um, something that uh, Jeremiah Grossman, the um, veteran of our application security industry, suggested a few years ago when we were due to release OWASP Top 10 2017. And the top suggestion from Jeremiah was, um, to include A0 or asset inventory, because these days the biggest application security risk are websites that you don't know you own. Why? Because if you don't know what you own, you cannot possibly secure it. And Netacker solves this challenge for you because it allows you to, um, uh, um, to create your asset inventory by scanning your network and scanning your assets. And of course, uh, the recommended way of using the attacker is to use it on your own network, but um, you can also use it for penetration testing engagements or for bug bounty work where you can attack somebody else's network. But of course, always make sure that you have permission to do that. So some of the attacker use cases, you can use it for asset discovery. So you can scan your network for open ports. You can, you can scan networks for new hosts you can scan network for default credentials. For example, admin admin, if you use uh, brute forcing, you can uh, quickly scan the network and find out uh, if there are any service with default credentials configured on it. You can scan your network for a specific vulnerability. For example, a big vulnerability uh, this year has been Microsoft Exchange SSRF CVE, um, uh, which affected thousands and thousands of organizations worldwide. And we have a free and open source tool called OWASP Netaka with a module which actually allows you to scan all your networks and discover vulnerable servers. You can also discover subdomains and open ports on them. You can discover things like expired SSL certificates in your IP ranges. Why is it important? Because if you have service with expired SSL sets, that means that the service probably abandoned and probably not patched. Uh, you can also find subdomains hosting vulnerable versions of content management systems such as WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. And of course, what is important that you can run any NetHacker modules on all subdomains of a specific domain. Um, you can automate NetHacker using the command line and you get results using CSV, JSON, and HTML format. You can use it in Docker in your organization. Uh, when you spin it up in Docker, it will actually use the web UI um, uh, or the API mod. And you can search for previous scan results and discovered assets in the database. That's what makes it great. I have a slide here which shows quickly what the OWASP web UI uh, looks like. It's um, quite simple and you can see different colors because different modules are color coded. And you can see that the brute forcing modules are orange, the vulnerability scanning modules are red and the scanning modules are green. So when you select a particular profile, for example, all vulnerability scanning modules selected here, they will all will be ticked and they will all be 
used. Um, important thing about the modules is that in the uh, latest version of Nitaka 003, uh, the modules are written in YAML, which means that it is very um, simple to uh, write new modules and contribute new modules. Please definitely do check out this new feature. Uh, the latest version is a little bit unstable yet, so we're still working on it. But the fact that it's using YAML actually will allow us, uh, will allow the project to respond quickly to the new vulnerabilities and release new modules allowing you to scan for these vulnerabilities in your network. Um, just like all of us projects, it is open source, so uh, we welcome contributions. If you want to contribute, please do check out the developer wiki, uh, which is uh, available on the documentation page. Uh, do read and follow the contributor guidelines. And if you uh, know Python, you can, of course, help us with uh, coding. If you know YAML, you can help us with the vulnerability modules. You can also help us with translations and documentation if you want to contribute a non in a non-technical way. So um, uh, that's it about NetTucker. Please uh, use it to attack your own network before the real attackers do. Um, I'm now ready to take any questions. Uh, and um, as you have uh, heard from the moderators, uh, we're taking questions today in OWASP Slack channel and the current OWASP Slack channel for this track is 20th anniversary temporal. You can also contact me via email or via Twitter at SecureStep9. Thank you.